Pokemon Red and Green released in Japan on February 27th, 1996. 28 years ago. And as someone born in 1996, that makes me feel really old. But who am I kidding? I don't need to explain these games to you. Pokemon is the single highest grossing media franchise of all time, beating out the likes of Mickey Mouse and Barbie combined. So, uh, yeah, you know what Pokemon is. <laughs> Um, the games I'm discussing now have no less than five remakes or re-releases, and honestly, if you told me there were more, then I would probably believe you. So let's just skip all the introduction and dive directly into the world of Kanto. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more, and let's get started. The region of Kanto in the Pokemon world is based on the most populous region of Japan, also called Kanto. Kanto is shown to be a region on the cutting edge of technology, home to high-rise buildings, genius scientists, and a feeling of excitement for the future. Much as the in-game Kanto mirrors the real-world Kanto, the rest of the world matches up with our own. A man at the Pewter Museum talks about humanity first landing on the moon in 1969. Silphco is a branch in Russia. Mew is stated in all versions of the game, but the Let's Go duology to live in South America. Lieutenant Surge is constantly referred to as the Lightning American. The Pokemon series was very much intended to take place in our real world at least at first. And even while many of those references are scrubbed away today, some remain in even the most recent versions. So let me lay out how this is going to go. I'll start off by discussing the various myths, legends, mythicals, and legendaries of the Kanto region. Um, that's going to be mostly a group of shorter stories that are a little disjointed. And then I'll start going into a little bit more detail about the history of Kanto itself. I originally wanted to do sections on each of the main characters, like the villains and the gym leaders and the professors but that was getting a little out of hand. I don't know, I might do those as separate videos. If you want to see me talk about some of those characters, then let me know in the comments or the Discord server, just so I know what you want to see. Um, but I'll just be doing what I feel like is necessary to understand Kanto in this video. After the history, I'll discuss the main players of the game's story and the events that take place within it. I will mostly be focusing on the versions in Fire Red and Leaf Green, which includes the Sevi Islands plotline. That said, all three versions of the game have some relevance to the greater Pokemon universe, for various reasons. Also, if you don't do a lot of Pokemon lore keeping or theorizing, I suggest setting aside a lot of what you think you know about the series. The Pokemon anime is obviously extremely popular and well regarded, but it's a separate canon for the games, and as such, a lot of what's true there isn't necessarily true here. The Pokemon Center nurses are not named Nurse Joy, Team Rocket did not create Mewtwo, and there is no Queen of Galar. Kanto is home to the first Pokemon, Mew. I know that title is thrown around a lot, and there's a whole meme about who was actually first, but officially Mew is the ancestor of all Pokemon. This is why Mew is capable of learning every TM and HM in the entire history of the Pokemon series. In both Generation 1 and Fire Red Leaf Green, Mew's home is stated to be Guyana, a South American nation that can be found right about here. However, Mew is actually found in Pokemon Emerald on Faraway Island, a similar tropical location that is found somewhere off of Hoenn. It's possible that Faraway is one of the hidden islands in the Sevi Islands, much like Birthright Island in Naval Rock, but since the island doesn't exist in Fire Red or Leaf Green, it's hard to say for sure. Faraway Island was introduced to remove the real-world reference from Mew's backstory, and is now the canon location where the Pokemon can be found. The legendary birds are also notable Pokemon located in this region. There are three elemental flying types of fire, ice, and lightning that serve Lugia, a Pokemon initially found in Johto that clearly is still heavily influential on Kanto. In the modern day, they can be found in locations related to their types, or Articuno in the caves connecting the ice-filled seafoam islands, Zapdos in an abandoned power plant along Route 10, and Moltres in either Victory Road or the volcanic Mount Ember in the Sevi Islands depending on which version of the game you're playing. Lugia can also be found in Kanto, specifically the lowest caverns of Naval Rock, one of the Sevi Islands. Its counterpart, Ho-Oh, can be found on top of the rock. However, we'll discuss the lore of these Pokemon more in our video on the Johto region. Sometime in the far-off past, an asteroid crashed down on a mountain in the Kanto region, likely giving the place its name, Mount Moon. This is the reason why many moonstones can be found in the mountain, it's assumed that they are from space. Clefairy is the first Pokemon to be recognized as having such an origin as well, 
but can also be found only in Mount Moon. Okay, now the next minute or so will be very heavily theory-based, so if you don't like that, feel free to skip on to the next chapter. The Moonstone also affected other Pokémon that lived on the Earth's surface, including Nidoran and Jigglypuff, Pokémon species that can only be naturally found on Route 3, near the base of Mount Moon. At least in Kanto. They can be found elsewhere in later games, but this may be the origin of these Pokémon being linked to the Moonstone. I'll need to do some research and see if I can tie in later Moonstone evolutions to space somehow. That will probably be another video in the near future. Jigglypuff takes on a more rabbit-like form after evolution, referencing the Japanese legend of the Moon Rabbit that makes Mochi. I can't see any obvious ties between Nidoking, Nidoqueen, and space, but if anything comes to mind for you, let me know. In the far more recent past, we start to see the formation of the Kanto region as we know it today. Professor Samuel Oak was known to have gone on his own Pokémon journey in his youth, alongside his rival, Agatha. The two fought fiercely, but eventually Oak became wary of becoming the strongest there ever was, and retired to do research, while Agatha fought her way into becoming a member of the Elite Four. This caused a strain on their relationship, and Agatha is still bitter to this day. A war was known to have happened in Kanto somewhere in the past few decades as well. Lieutenant Surge and a number of his gym trainers were known to have fought in it, with the eventual gym leader working as a pilot. It's unknown what groups fought in this war or why, though theories abound on this point. At some point, a criminal group formed in Kanto called Team Rocket, based on the Yakuza. Theories about their origins could once again be an entirely separate video, but their leadership would eventually fall to a man named Giovanni, the leader of the Viridian City Gym. It's possible he was also the founder, since his lieutenants seem more loyal to him than they do to the team itself. Team Rocket makes their living by stealing and poaching Pokémon to sell, either in whole or in parts. They seem to be under the belief that all Pokémon belong to Team Rocket, and seek to increase their strength, and seek to increase the strength of their organization. Silphco is a large company in the Pokémon world known for a number of technologies. They manufacture Pokéballs, and were the initial creators of the Master Ball. They also created the Silphsco, which allows for identification of ghost Pokémon. Not ghost-type Pokémon, mind you, but actual ghosts of dead Pokémon. That said, Silphco is heavily corrupt, with a number of its employees also serving Team Rocket. Other various plot threads start to come together when we introduce the figure of genius scientist Dr. Fuji, who owned a large mansion on Cinnabar Island. Fuji was good friends with Blaine, the island's gym leader. He was also the founder of the Cinnabar Lab, which would go on to create the technology for reanimating fossils. It was also Fuji's research team that found Mew and took it back to Kanto, as mentioned earlier in the video. They experimented on the ancestor of all Pokémon, who wound up giving birth to a new Pokémon, one that scientists named Mewtwo. However, Mewtwo was far more powerful than the scientists could ever imagine, and after almost seven months in captivity, Mewtwo escaped the research lab in the basement of the Cinnabar Mansion, causing the place to be set on fire. Mewtwo would end up hiding out in the Cerulean Cave, which would be cordoned off by the Pokémon League in order to prevent unsuspecting trainers from accidentally wandering in a coming face-to-face -face with a genetic Pokémon. After these events, Fuji swore off his life of experimentation. He left his old home in ruins and moved to Lavender Town, where he started a new life taking care of orphaned and abandoned Pokémon near the Pokémon Tower, which serves as a graveyard for Pokémon. He also left a sign on Faraway Island, warning future sailors of the dangers that come from this island. That said, the existence of Mewtwo was too powerful for the world to ignore, and Team Rocket quickly caught on to its existence. They began making larger moves in order to capture Mewtwo. They besieged Silphco, stealing the Silphscope to track down Ghost Pokémon, a type strong against Psychic types, and tried to find the Master Ball to ease in capturing Mewtwo. That said, despite it being shown as otherwise in the anime and the Pokémon Adventures manga, there's nothing that actually ties Team Rocket to the creation of Mewtwo in the games. That said, their actions hit towards knowing about Mewtwo. This is further proven by the Team Rainbow Rocket version of Giovanni also having Mewtwo as his lead Pokémon. And with that, we enter the events of the Kanto games. Our protagonist is 11-year-old Red, a young trainer-to-be living in Pallet Town. There's also a female protagonist in Fire Red and Leaf Green named Leaf, but as Red appears in both the Johto and Alola games, it's clear that he's the intended canon trainer for this game. Pallet Town is a rather young city, which only came on the map when the promising scientist Professor Oak 
set up his lab in the area. Oak's grandson, a young man named Blue, has been Red's rival since childhood. The two will be given starter Pokemon by Professor Oak, and sent on a journey to complete his research by filling out his computerized Pokedex. Okay, so two clarifications to make here. First, it's likely that, even in Fire Red and Leaf Green, Red did not start his journey with any of the three traditional Kanto starters. Instead, it's implied both by his battle on Mount Silver and his appearance in the Alola games that his starter was Pikachu, like in Pokemon Yellow. All right, hey, I'm here from, I'm going to call it the editing booth, but it's the same desk as we always see. Um, in the original script, I said that Blue's starter was probably Eevee, but actually if we take a look at this key art from the original Red, Blue, Green, we see that Blue has a Charizard, while Red has a Pikachu. So not only does this art go on to support the Pikachu theory, it also tells us that he actually started with a Charizard, which is a Pokemon that he continues to be shown with in, say, the Let's Go games. That said, in Let's Go, Red's ace is a Venusaur, while Blue's is a Charizard. So, in those games, that's likely who their starters were. The second clarification is that Professor Oak was the creator of the first Pokedex. As shown in Legend Arceus, the concept of a Pokedex has existed for at least a century. However, Oak's is an automatically updating computerized model, and likely one of the first of its kind, though another scientist from the Hoenn region named Professor Birch created a similar model at about the same time. The goal given to them by Oak was to fill out the Pokedex, but the two boys wanted to become Pokemon champions and take on the gym challenge. They would do both at once, battling through Kanto's eight gyms while collecting as many Pokemon as possible. On the way, Red would have numerous run-ins with Team Rocket, who he managed to outsmart and outfight at each encounter. He even took on Giovanni, the organization's leader, no less than three times, including in his gym at Viridian City. During this final battle, Red would not only learn his 8th and final gym badge, but also, in a way, change Giovanni's heart. Realizing his faults and his pride, Giovanni would disband Team Rocket and go into hiding, banning his duties as both Rocket Boss and Gym Leader. Red would go on to face the Pokemon League on the Indigo Plateau, where he would defeat not only the Elite Four, but also the League's champion, Blue Oak, and take claim as Kanto's single strongest trainer. Oak would berate Blue for his treatment of Pokemon as tools rather than friends, and Blue would begin to change his outlook on life. Red would later go on to face Mewtwo, but likely not capture the Pokemon, as he can be found in the wild in later generations. This is true of the legendary birds as well. Maybe he caught them for the sake of his Pokedex, but even if that happened, they would be released into the wild before the events of the Johto games. And in Red, Blue, and Yellow, that's where the game ends. The Fire Red and Leaf Green remakes, however, add an entirely new section to the game. These are the Sevi Islands, a group of islands off the coast of Kanto and Johto where Pokemon from both regions can be found. The islands were given their names because they were said to be created in seven days. Not because there are seven islands, which is a common misconception in the game's universe as well as in ours. There are at least nine islands in the archipelago, seven of which are numbered, while the last two, Birth Island and Naval Rock, are hidden away and known by very few people. I mentioned Naval Rock earlier, but Birth Island is one of the places where Deoxys can be found. After finishing the Cinnabar Gym, Red was invited to the island by Bill, creator of Kanto's PC system, to run an errand for his friend Celia, who was working on expanding the PC system to the Sevi Islands. The people of the Sevi Islands didn't look very kindly on those who lived in Kanto, Despite that, Red managed to turn their opinion on him by taking down a biker gang and finding a lost girl kidnapped by a Hypno. Red and Blue would both return to the islands after their champion battle, in search of new Pokemon. Likely this was some time after the events of the game, as the two seemed to be on a lot friendlier terms than they were in their last encounter. Here, Blue is shown to have a bit of a character arc, which would lead into his appearance in the Johto games. Upon coming to the Sevi Islands and seeing all the new Johto Pokemon, learning that this is only a handful of the Pokemon that existed beyond Kanto's border, Blue realized just how insurmountable the idea of completely filling out the Pokedex even was. He resolved that it wasn't worth the effort, and returned to Kanto to find a new purpose in life. He would go on to take over for the now-missing Giovanni as the Viridian City Gym Leader, and would retain his predecessor's reputation as the most powerful among his peers. 
Lou would also ignore the gym leader tradition of having a type focus, and instead preferred to use a team with a variety of types, serving as a real challenge to up-and-coming trainers. Despite that, Red wouldn't give up on filling in the Pokedex. He started by exploring the rest of the Sevi Islands. While there, he would learn that Team Rocket was still surviving, and would continue to follow Giovanni even despite his disappearance. Red would challenge the Team Rocket admins that were remaining on the islands, but even that defeat wasn't enough to dim their spirits, as Rocket would continue to exist for the next two years. It's believed that the admins fought in the Rocket Warehouse are Arion and Archer for the Johto games. First, there's the obvious point that they are keeping Rocket alive after Giovanni's disappearance. Second, the two have very similar teams as those two would have in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. And third, one of the computers in the base hits towards the Lake of Rage conspiracy from those titles. This theory has not been outright confirmed, but I pretty much believe it's what was intended. After this adventure, Red would abandon his position as a Kanto champion and continue traveling to other regions. Two years after the events of the game, he would face the champion of Johto atop Mount Silver. A few years after that, he would be found as one of the battle legends of Alola's Battle Tree, alongside his rival turned friend Blue Oak. Red's Pokemon journey will continue, so long as there are new Pokemon to catch. That said, you may have noticed that I mentioned almost nothing about the Let's Go games. That's because they are... their own situation. In the Let's Go games, rather than the main characters being Red, Blue, and Leaf, they're instead new characters Chase, Elaine, and Trace. But these aren't just reimaginings of the old characters, as both Red and Blue are included as NPCs, as well as another character named Green, who is likely a version of Leaf. But those games also aren't sequels to any previous Kanto game, as the new protagonists are still the ones to defeat Team Rocket in Sylph, Lavender Town, and the Game Corner, and every other location they are fought in during the original games. Giovanni also returns as the Viridian City Gym Leader until the post-game, where he's replaced by Blue, so... What gives? Okay, so this is only my theory, but the best explanation to me seems to be that, in this universe, the creation of Mewtwo was a few years later than it was in previous timelines. Does it explain why Red and Blue are both older and have already gone through their character arcs from the previous games? But why Rocket seems to have waited longer to make the big moves we saw in the main game? So each of these games takes place in their own timeline. Yeah, this is this timeline's gonna get a little confusing pretty quick. Uh, both the original games and Fire Red Leaf Green lead into different versions of the Johto games. Obviously, there's no Let's Go Johto for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee to lead into. And that's it for this video. It was a lot of information, but I hope you followed it well enough. I'm going to continue doing more Pokemon videos in the future, so if you like Pokemon lore, then I suggest subscribing. Let me know what kind of spin-off videos you'd like to see in the comments. I've really been thinking about doing a series based on the Pokemon Adventures manga, like I am with the Sonic Archie comics. I'm not sure yet, but if you want to see that, let me know. And with that, I'll let you guys go. This video is already long enough, and I'll see you soon.